I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the work area and uh, what you'll need to uh, build your rolling ball sculpture, the supplies and tools and things like that. Uh, let's talk with the, the, the area. Uh, you can see I have right here a, a dining table. Beautiful for me uh, because I can work in a nice air conditioned room and, and I can actually hear the TV going. And, and so anyway, um, you'll probably end up having to work in the garage. Uh, be prepared for that or you might have to work outside. Wherever you work, find a good suitable place to work at. You might want to find a table to work on or a counter, something like that. Uh, so if you can get uh, air conditioning in your garage, something so that you can uh, enjoy uh, working on your rolling ball sculptures while you're... What I do is I put uh, some cardboard down and uh, this works great for protecting the table against uh, uh, propane torch scorches and scratches and all that sort of stuff. So think about that. Um, also, you want to make sure that uh, you uh, uh, are fully clothed, that sort of thing, because, you know, hot solder uh, can burn pretty severely. Uh, you will burn yourself with uh, the, the torch one way or another, or heat up the copper and forget it's hot and touch it or something. So definitely you want to think about uh, safety whenever you work on uh, sculptures, you know, eye safety, uh, wear glasses, that sort of thing. So definitely uh, you want to think about that. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about are the tools that I use uh, for doing the sculptures. Uh, most importantly is your needle nose pliers. Get some good ones. You see these are kind of really nice Stanley uh, kind of tool, uh, needle nose pliers. You'll, you'll use these uh, the most for, for bending your, your wires. Uh, the next thing you'll need is uh, some cable cutters. Now these are your friend. Don't get a pair of uh, regular old dice uh, like these. Uh, you will need a pair of these by the way. but. Uh, these are not what you'll use to, to actually cut the wire on a normal basis. You'll use wire cutters and uh, these uh, cable cutters. And uh, when you use these, you will find out that these are your friend. They're really easy to use to cut the wire, whereas the, the dikes are, are a lot tougher to use. So definitely wanna, you want to get a good set of uh, cable cutters. The other thing you want is a pair of pliers. You'll always be using these for one reason or another, uh, besides your needing those pliers, uh, just to hold on to the, the wire or something while you're trying to bend it with something else. Uh, you need a good clothespin. Uh, these are great for holding, uh, actually you need probably a hundred of them or something like that. Uh, these are great for holding the wire in place while you're trying to do your soldering. So do that. Um, our next uh, thing is you'll, you'll want to uh, get you some good uh, wire. I, now I use 8 gauge wire. This is, you can get this at any uh, home improvement center. And uh, this is basically electrical ground wire that I use, 8 gauge. and. Uh, that's what we'll be using to build our sculpture today. Um, the other thing is you'll need a... Now this is a, basically a milk jug, but this is my uh, scrap uh, trash bin that I use to throw the, the scraps and stuff to, to, that I won't be using. Um, you'll also want to get a good propane torch. Now this is, this is a... a probably, I, I really don't like the, the big fat boys. If you can keep from getting the fat boy uh, propane bottles, uh, get the, the tall and narrow kind. These are a little easier to work with, but sometimes these aren't available, so you might get these. The other thing, you might find uh, with uh, easier to use a tube that has the little propane uh, nozzle on the end. Uh, for me, it doesn't really work out because you're really only going to solder one or two joints at a time, and so always having to pull this cable in and out is probably not uh, worth it, but you know, if the cable works great for you, then more power to you. Uh, make sure you get a good uh, flint starter so you can start your propane torch with. The other thing that's your friend is flux. You definitely need to get flux. It looks gross and it's goopy and all that, but uh, this is beautiful stuff to help you uh, solder your, your uh, sculpture. And the actual solder that I use is a uh, lead-free solder. Uh, you don't want to use the, uh, the lead solder you know, of course it'll work, but if people are going to be touching your sculpture and, and uh, you're going to be handling the, the solder all the time, it's best to just stay away from lead. And so do that. It's good for the environment. That's what thing. All right. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about is the marbles. Um, now you can see here, I've got several to choose from. Gotta get these over here where you can see them. Um, these marbles I got at the, the dollar store or, or discount stores for about a dollar. You can get a hundred of them for a dollar. That's a really good deal. A penny a piece. Can't beat that. Um, 
course, they're kind of, you know, plain Jane, so you may not like those. You can actually get uh, better marbles. These are some better marbles I got at uh, Moon Marbles. Uh, there's several marble places on the internet. You can get jab Jabo Marbles or, or there's several others. Um, these are about six bucks per about 80 of them. I got some really nice uh, oily looking, uh, comet looking marbles and special marbles. These, these are pretty nice. They're about, uh, again, six bucks for about a pound. Um, those are all five eighths inch marbles. The other size you can go with, if you're making a bigger structure, uh, you might, or sculpture, you may want to try to go with bigger marbles. These are one inch marbles and uh, they're, they're really nice. They're again, they're glass marbles with a little uh, metallic look. You know? Uh, or if you're building a smaller sculpture, like like a Christmas ornament, you may want to go with these little peewee marbles. These are about three eighths of an inch uh, size marbles. And of course, there's all other sorts of marbles, uh, uh, sizes and colors you can get. Um, you'll just have to check that out. But uh, those are the kind of marbles you'll, you'll want to choose. Oh, uh, one of the sizes I guess I didn't show you was the half inch marbles. Uh, they're on the same league as the five eighths, but you want to make sure that you don't mix them up because half inch marbles will not work on a five eighths sculpture and, and vice versa. Uh, what I like to do is after I build the sculpture, since it is out of copper, copper tarnishes, I like to clear coat it with, uh, you can get this at Walmart for a dollar, uh, I think maybe a dollar twenty now, they kind of got up a little bit, but uh, that will clear coat your sculpture to keep it from tarnishing. Also, um, I use, uh, this is basically a tester's model copper paint, and uh, I use that for hiding the solder, and so it makes the whole sculpture look.